Hello, Hustle Fam. I hope you all doing great. Welcome to you all lovely people and welcome if today is your first time coming across this channel. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe. So in today's video, we're going to be continuing from last week where we asked the question, is Ghana now the giant of Africa and is Nigeria chopping last? Did you know that Ghana has beaten Nigeria twice as much in professional soccer matches? Nigeria has played Ghana 56 times and out of these 56 encounters, Nigeria has won only 12, while where Ghana has won twice as much, plus one, making it 25 wins. Both countries have 19 draws. Do you still think this is a rivalry? After this video, we're going to see how Ghana has emerged the giants of Africa, whilst Nigeria, well, they're still chopping last. So, Nigeria is the biggest economy on the continent. According to the World Bank, Nigeria's GDP is more than seven times the GDP of Ghana. In the same vein, you would expect foreign direct investment, which is FDI, to flow into Nigeria at that same pace, but that is not the case. In 2018, Ghana got more FDI than Nigeria, suggesting that investors were very comfortable with voting money into the country than they were about the continent's giant. Ghana got 3.3 billion in 2018 when Nigeria could only get 2.2 billion. In 2020, the National Bureau of Statistics recorded that Nigeria got 414.79 million in foreign direct investment in nine months, but Ghana got 785.62 million in six months, despite the size of the Nigerian economy, investors seem to favor Ghana. In the comment section of my last video, you know how our Nigerian brothers are saying they are the biggest and they've got the biggest economy because they are the most populated um, country. But a wise man once said, Nigeria is not a big market because it has over 200 million people. A market is not just the number of people, but the number of people who can afford a product. With nearly half of Nigeria living in extreme poverty, there are certain goods they cannot afford. So numbers actually do not count here because more than that, other half of the country living above poverty is also divided into classes. Very few of them can afford a brand new car. On the long run, the market for new vehicles is really small in Nigeria. While Ghana is not different because we also buy home used cars. But the companies that are auto companies seem to trust Ghana. So Volkswagen, Suzuki, Toyota, Nissan, which are auto companies, have chosen to set up a plant in Ghana. These are jobs Nigerians could use with their number, but the companies have trusted Ghana to settle in their giants of Africa. While it is used less frequently outside Nigeria, nowadays, the term giant of Africa remains a centerpiece of Nigerian self-image. The Nigerian government's position on trade, investment, and travel is similar to character to that of a remote previously important European province that is not yet over its history and views outsiders and modern ideas with suspicion. Statistically, Nigeria is the obvious destination for foreign investment in West Africa. But practically and on paper, investors and tourists are increasingly voting with their feet and choosing Ghana ahead of Nigeria. During his first iteration as a military head of state, Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari's economic and cultural idea of Nigeria focuses exclusively 
on a vision of the country as a completely self-sufficient giant whose massive internal market is the be-all and end-all of business in Africa. By completely ignoring the fact that six people slide into extreme poverty every minute in Nigeria, Buhari's administration has become dangerously obsessed with the idea of turning Nigeria into the economic equivalent of the mythical perpetual motion machine. Ghana, on the other hand, with its smaller population and lack of national superiority complex, is not burdened by such problematic ideas. Ghana's tourism revenue, currently ranked first in West Africa, shows that it's reaping the rewards of opening up to the world while Nigeria closes its borders both literally and figuratively. Much of the Ghana government's efforts to pitch itself as the alternative to Nigeria in West Africa hinges on its year of return campaign. In 2019, the country welcomed more foreign visitors than ever before in its post-independence history. The African diaspora is buying into the idea of visiting or moving to Ghana with predictably positive trade and investment results. In Nigeria, while Nigeria counts a far greater share of the African diaspora as its descendants, having hosted at least four of West Africa's biggest slave ports, which were in Badagri, Ibuti Meta, Kalaba, and Okrika, Ghana has cashed the check that its bigger neighbor sat on for decades. Ghana also grants citizenship to people from the African diaspora, which allows returnees the right to own land. Despite having access to far more unused land than Ghana, Nigeria is failing to grasp the benefits of attracting more visitors. It also appears content with imprisoning itself within its borders. Ghana has successfully positioned itself as the beneficiary of Nigeria's puzzling withdrawal from the global investment table. As the next largest English-speaking country in West Africa and favorable travel and trade conditions, Ghana has quietly gone about its business. It has a simple and transparent visa policy. It is also strengthening its passport through a series of bilateral travel agreements allowing for easier access to more destinations for its citizens. Ghana's right to return campaign has generated huge interest among African Americans and Afro-Caribbeans who want to visit or relocate to the continent. In 2018, Ghana issued roughly 80,000 visitor visas. Between January and September 2019, 750,000 visitors' visas were issued, allowing more money and skills to easily flow into Ghana. Nigeria, by contrast, has a notoriously long and expensive visa application process and a surprisingly difficult path to citizenship. All my Niger brothers and sisters, tell us in the comment section how difficult it is to get a visa or to get a passport in Nigeria. From soccer matches to Twitter headquarters and everything in between, Ghana has found a way to outdo Nigeria and a lot more recently. It is time for the giants of Africa to take a step back and make new policy choices to renew its place as a choice investment destination on the continent or just simply start by winning soccer matches against the black stars. Clearly from this video, Nigeria is no longer the giant of Africa. Perhaps in height, but Nigeria has carried last. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and my Niger fam. Make una no vex, na play with day. Bye-bye.